A Rose for Emily by William Faulkner. William Faulkner was born in Lafayette County, Mississippi on September 25, 1897 and died there on July 6, 1962. His deep southern heritage, especially his life in his hometown of Oxford, is evident in many of his works, and his short story, A Rose for Emily, is typical of his artistry in creating a landscape of modernist regionalism that serves to introduce readers to the post-Civil War South with its crumbling bastions of class consciousness and fossilized ideology. Faulkner's fictionalized township of Jefferson in the equally fictional Yoknapatapa County embodies the southern mores and customs the award-winning author presents in the short story that many critics consider to be his best, A Rose for Emily. After finishing A Rose for Emily, many readers won't forget the ending and that disturbing long strand of iron-gray hair. From the short story's exposition, with its description of Miss Emily's house, featuring faded cupolas and spires and scrolled balconies, to the discovery of Miss Emily's deadly, literally, secret, the reader is escorted through an imaginary southern town that has all too real archaic practices. The edict of the mayor, Colonel Sartoris, that no Negro woman would appear on the streets without an apron, testifies to the influence of the discriminatory Jim Crow laws practiced in the South for a century after the Civil War. The narrator's heavy usage of we and our establishes the distinction between the townsfolk of Jefferson and one of the founding families, the Grierson's. This perpetuation of elite favoritism creates a class consciousness. Though hardly anyone in Jefferson knew Miss Emily personally, the narrator states, our whole town went to her funeral. They did not so much out of respect, but out of curiosity. The narrator, like the nosy neighbor who knows everyone's business, chronicles Miss Emily's sheltered life. It is a life of seclusion only interrupted for a stint as a China painting teacher for children whose parents still valued the Grierson name. Although Miss Emily's life is lacking in drama, Faulkner makes it intriguing, and we keep reading to see if we can discover anything new about Jefferson's quirkiest resident, about this woman who, thank goodness, is much stranger, much lonelier, and much more dysfunctional than we. And when Miss Emily finally had some semblance of a romantic relationship, the folks were ready at the helm with their judgments. Miss Emily's reputation was then held up to scrutiny as the townspeople hid behind their jealousies to sneak a peek at her Yankee beau, Homer Barron, and Miss Emily riding in the glittering buggy. The collective tainting began as the gossipers disdainfully whispered about Miss Emily shirking her responsibility to be a good example. Yet, hadn't the town already given her the license to do whatever she wanted? Once the next generation's children stopped coming for painting lessons and her gentleman friend Homer had vanished, she became puffy, obese, and pale. Her ascetic life only trebled the locals' interest, especially after Homer deserted poor Miss Emily. As the pity for the jilted spinster grew, so did the oddity. Two years after the death of her controlling father, who helped perpetuate the notion that no one was good enough for Miss Emily, and shortly after her love affair with Homer ended abruptly, a strange smell hovered around the place. 